Happy Rock. What's Happy happening? Rock. Not much. Hey, gang. Yeah, good yourself. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Beautiful weather down here. What's it like up there? Oh, the, the weather. Why do we, <laughs> Every time. Yeah, it's a normal conversation starter. You know that. Yeah, but who wants to hear two people talking about the. When someone says to me, how's the weather? Straight away, I think, this is going nowhere, this conversation. That's a bit rude. Yeah, but the system. <laughs> it's basically it's saying, g'day, I don't really want to speak to you. Um, what's the first thing I can notice that I can speak about to hurry this up? Oh, the weather. No, How's no. The, how good's the weather? No, it's it's a it's a converse, conversation starter. It's a point where, oh hi, how are you going? Just beautiful weather, and then you know you continue from there. Yeah, where do you like, go from there, by the way? You go to other points of. How's your um, family? Com- <laughs> How's work? Who gives a fuck? Someone shoot me in the face. So I don't have to speak to this person. <laughs> Well, if you think that, yeah, that's very negative. That's that terrible. is a bit negative. I'm oh, sorry. I'll, mm. I'll get a bit more optimism about me. Um, yeah. What's going on? Oh, not much. Just um, footy finals, mate. I'm just excited about these games that are coming up this weekend and stuff. How and... good? How good's a footy? It's like it's the whole season of just shit refing and all the whinging on <laughs> social media is gone, and it's just like a new comp. Yeah, there's been actually there's been some really good talk about the referees and their performances over the over the weekend, and saying the games have been let to flow, and they've been they haven't been, you know, they haven't been the the talk of the of the game. Yeah, and I saw some wanker gets on and writes, "Oh, how come you're not still policing it the same as you have all year? Like, just shut up and let them go. They're doing good. The trolls, the trolls. Ah, they're everywhere. They're just." Everyone's negative, eh? Hey, when you see a comment, I, I do it myself sometimes. When I see like a statement or a comment on social media, I'm yep. like, straight away, my ego and, and my opinion jumps out, you know? And I'm like, oh, I'm getting good at stopping it. Oh, sometimes I'm not. I don't know. I don't know. It's fucking, it's just crazy. Twitter, Twitter's the worst, I reckon. Twitter for for negative stuff. Twitter, Twitter's really, because it's a statement, it's like an opinion it's really yep. opinion based, more so like we'll say uh, Facebook and Instagram are more about the photos and images and stuff. Yep. Um, yeah, I find that that's so bloody negative. Twitter, anything I ever tweet, anything, I just get hammered. It's like, some of it's funny, but uh, sometimes well, I, I'm just like, I'd love to find this bloke and just shave his face with a brick. And... That's if it. That's if it is a bloke. Yeah, could, or, or could, could be, be a little, anyone. Yeah, it could be a little. Yeah. Something could be an alien. Um, well, that that goes to um, all sports people, mate. Ben Hunt has to stay away from the social media because it affected the way he played. Because he had so many trolls, people telling him how ordinary he plays and this and that. They just they sit behind their keyboards and yeah, get, it makes people emotional. I, I, oh, absolutely. I think that's I, I've got a bit of a problem because if I'm at home bored of a night time, mm. like when I go to bed and I'm just looking through stuff and someone's like picking at me, I'm like, all right, let's see how late you can stay up, and I'll just go to the death. Yeah, <laughs> just I'll just spray them. I'll, I, it's hard for me, like if I don't have any information on them, like especially if they're, you know, obviously on a private thing, or or they just don't have a a profile photo, and there's no photos of them hanging out with other people. I, I haven't got much to work with, but they can yeah. just Google something about me or my footy career and just hammer me. Yep. And I've just got to try and be creative and make it up. It's a good test, actually. It's a good, <laughs> it's a good it's test, a good test. Isn't it? yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, I'll, uh, sometimes if I'm bored enough, I'll, I'll mm. bloody fight to the death. Well, mate, it, um, a leading sports psychologist says that the NRL should do more to help players, uh, such as Ben Hunt, who uh, really affected his game. And I mean, he played really well on the weekends, and George was just super. But, um, but what can you do? You can just say don't go on social media, well, really. Yeah. Pretty much stay away from it. But, I mean, it's, got, it's just got everybody. Everybody's phone's in their head. Everyone... It, has a sees what's going on, whether that's for for them or if it's for someone else or whatever. But it's yeah, it is a it is an issue. It is a problem. How good was Tarek Sims Mate, on the weekend? How good was St George? They were fantastic. Yeah, all together. Yeah, bloody hell. That was that was. They just looked like a yeah. It's they went through a rut and they went started off good, went through a rut, and now they've just hit their straps. Yep. and they're just playing like. Men possess it's, that some of the slow motion footage of Tarek Simmons, um, Tarek Simmons just running the ball yep. as hard as he could. Like you could see every cell in his body was as intense as it possibly could he's be. A, he's a weapon, yeah, he's great. I, I'm pumped about him being a part of the Blues for the next 
you know, yeah. five to yeah. ten years or whatever. The, the, generally, the Sims family, they're all weapons, aren't they? Even the the um, the sister who plays um, plays rugby league as well. She's she's a weapon. Yeah, good stock. And they, those boys have been like a lot of them have been around for a long time. And and uh, you know, mm. just uh, big Viking like boys. They just freaking yeah, aren't they? Yeah, got them big calcified, strong, raw bones that just last the last the ages. Mm. And what it, um, did you see the Latrell Mitchell tackle? Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah, look, it it, it wasn't as bad as the um, the Will Chambers one, but it's still it's yeah. still the same sort of uh, movement and stuff. And when in that situation, if the if the neck if the neck of the the ball carrier gets caught in that in that part and that go and you go down really hard and that and it, and it doesn't where it's his head slipped out. Um, and it was okay in the end, and he got a bit of a burn, but but it can get it, it could go worse, definitely. Yeah, it's I guess it's they've got to be really because you know people blow up and say oh it's bullshit why was that a penalty and why was that a, an offence to be suspended from and but if you just think if it just goes a little bit more velocity the wrong way, Absolutely. and then we've got another case like Alex McKinnon. Yeah, you know for sure we got we just got to just got to be it's got to be so brutally stamped out that. Yeah, they have to, you know. I know it's hard, though. Like we always say, like with the collision and the pace of the game, yeah. when you fall on the ground sometimes, your bodies are in weird positions and it's hard to get out of the way of hurting someone sometimes. But, yeah, I feel like that, that one, that should, as soon as you see anyone in that position, that's a warning sign to yeah, do the opposite. It's a, it's a definite... It's a definite movement that you're trying to sort of push it, push him down really hard and, and drill him into the ground. But yeah. at the same time, you've got your chest behind his neck and, he's, and, he's, and his head can't get out. So, it, I, yeah. I mean, the Will Chambers one was five, five times worse than, than uh, Latrell's one. Yeah. But, but it's still, it's the movement that, that is an issue. Yeah, it's not great. Mm. But um, there are some, going to be some good games this weekend, eh? Yeah, we've got the Sharks versus Panthers there. Um, they're playing on Friday night at Allianz. Yeah, commiserations to Wade Graham doing his ACL. Yeah, not not good, eh? Not good. Has he had? Nah, not he, good. He's had those knee problems before, or um, I don't think he's new. done. He hasn't done his ACL before. I don't mm. think he's had a couple of knee problems here and there, but nothing as severe as that. But um, I'll miss him. I'll miss him. Bloody earth, he's toughness. Jeez, he, he was yeah doing some good things during the game the other night before he uh, he cut like really good tackles and good runs and yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, anyway. his, his presence on the field is is that they'll miss they'll miss him definitely miss him and then on um, Saturday rabbits versus dragons. Yeah, that'll be massive. Yeah. That'll be a massive one. Yeah. Pumped to see that. Yeah, now no, I've got shits about something. Oh, here we go. What's the matter? Well, I I go on every year about the fact that um, the uh, Melbourne Storm, the Mexicans down there, always have an extra advantage. Yeah, this time of year. Now they they play the winner out of the Sharks and Panthers, and f- yep. and for me that's the that's the weaker of the two games in re- in regards to um, and Sharks got some Sharks have got some injuries and as I said Wade Graham's out and stuff like that so and the Panthers have got some players out as well but th- they'll play the winner out of the Sharks and Panthers at Melbourne. Yeah. And this time of year after the first semi final. No one should be getting any ground advantage. Everything should be in Sydney because um, the game didn't start in Brisbane. The game didn't start at Melbourne. The game started in Sydney, and that's the home of the game. Do you think – I agree, but do you think it's because if it's um, – because if Melbourne play in Sydney, uh, Sydney team, the crowd will be awful? Or do you think there may be because – It'll be better crowd. Like more people will go from Sydney to Melbourne to watch their team. Then would it be something to do with that? Well, yeah, I don't know if that's a, a decision making thing, but whether the yeah, I don't know. I don't. It have to be money. It have to well, be something to do with money. Yeah, it's got something to do with money. And and I know, we know they're going to get a full house down there and stuff like that. But it's it's too yeah. much of an advantage for a team, a one team town like that that. Yeah, I agree. It's especially Melbourne, bloody hell! If it was like, if it was their first year in the in the final series, like it'd be maybe ah, oh, that's good, you know, expand the game. But yep. it's like uh, they don't need any help. No, and it's like like I said about the um, the Broncos. I mean, the, the I, I talked about the advantage the Broncos might have in um, at at their stadium on the weekend, yep. Suncorp, but it didn't make any difference. <laughs> the Dragons blew them off the park, so hopefully that happens. No. 
I'd, I'd like to see the stats of percentages of yeah teams winning with a home ground advantage in a semi final. But um, yeah, as you more, see, like more so, happen. yeah, more so for Obviously. Melbourne because of of their um their quality and how good a team they are, and they're very hard to beat anywhere. Yeah, it doesn't seem fair. Like yeah, like I said, if it was say. I don't know, the Warriors, and we went over to New Zealand, you'd be like, oh, no, fair enough, you know. Like, yeah. anyway, anyway, I've had my wins. Yeah, Sharks versus Panthers on Friday, they would be beauty, and then Rabbits versus Dragons. The Dragons, if they play like that, they'll win the comp. Is that Saturday or Sunday? It's Saturday, ANZ Stadium. Oh, okay, so then you have two games. Yeah, bloody oath. Oh, they were just, they were just, yeah, like they had a shot of frigging speed or something. They were just off their heads with aggression and passion, weren't they? They flew out the game, the game. Generally, from both sides, was very fast. It was the fastest game I'd seen all year. Yeah, it was good. I'd, uh, it was the first time watching the game that I like. I did being a bit negative. I did see, or oh, didn't see many people at either game. To be honest, there were, there were a couple of shots there when the uh, goal kickers were kicking for goal, and there was just no one in the background. I was like, "How is this a semi final? This should be packed." But anyway. What I'm saying is the footy was so good that I kind of didn't think of that that much. Yeah, you, well, you wouldn't have been thinking. Uh, Suncorp, they, they they pretty much had a full house. They had 42,000 yeah, people. they didn't, but they said that. Yeah, I know. They they, that, there was and, gaps, wasn't there, in the in the crowd? Everywhere. Yeah. All up the top uh, all up the top of the top tier, pretty much, yep. was more empty than not. Yeah. I, I thought, well, it holds, I think it holds about over 50, 52, 53 or something like that. Yeah, so, it was still um, a solid crowd. So it's, it's a great crowd. It's, it's always ten thousand short of what the um, the capacity is. So yeah. yeah, yeah. But I thought that too. Yeah, you're right. I, I looked at the uh, the gaps when I they told they said how many the uh, how many people were there. I thought it doesn't look like it. No, nah, I don't know. Anyway, hopefully they put their heads together, the marketing gang, and come up with something for next year. So they can... who you who you are thinking on Friday? Sharks, Panthers. Who will um, go further and play the Storm next week? I would say the Sharks. My head says the Sharks. Mm -hmm. But I think the Panthers will get a little confidence out of the way they came back against the Warriors. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, I'll stick with Sharks. I think Sharks will will get them. Yeah, I think Sharks will will beat them, regardless of um, um, their injury list at the moment. Um, So they'll go on to play the Storm. And they've got a good record against the Storm. Out of both of them, I'd, I'd... think that they beat the Storm the week after. Yeah, who knows? Mm. And Saturday, Rabbits versus Dragons. What do you think there? Uh, I'll tip the Dragons again. I reckon they're going to yep. yeah, have the momentum from their win yep. and carry it into this game. I think the same too, actually. I think the Dragons, if they play anywhere near that, they'll blow the Rabbits off the park. Well, if you're going for uh, don't Sharks start. and Dragons and I am, then I'm going for Panthers and oh, South. Okay. Yeah. Just like the other other years where I, I won the uh, tipping competition with who I tipped for most yeah. of the year. Yeah. What was the score again? I won 76, you were 40 or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, what else has been happening in the world anyway? In the world? Um, what about, um, did you see this... Serena Williams outburst. Oh, don't. My blood boils as soon as you say a name. Oh, okay. What's your that What's was, your take on that? Yeah, it's just. Oh, my opinion of it is, she's just a careful, careful carrying on like a fuckwit. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, tell me what you really think. Yeah, well, fuck, man. honestly, okay. Heat of battle, heat of a uh, high uh, pressure situation. Yep. People have outbursts. I've had them. I know what they're like. You can't control it. It just happens and you're like, oh, shit, after it. But I think she deep down felt stupid but has carried it on to make out like she's the victim still afterwards. And what sucked was that poor girl who won, it became a big booing fest because, no, was, you know, Serena's yeah, so right. well just respected in that sport that the whole crowd turned against the whole decision. Yep. And it became a big, like, protest opposed to, a celebration for this new young girl yeah. to win the freaking game. Like, yeah. And, and that poor girl cried yeah, and, it and then Serena was like, let's not boo. Let's not like make it out. Like she was the, yeah, it was half created it all. It was half hearted. Yeah. That's right. You know what? If she fucking didn't have such a big ego, she would have said, listen, I got carried away. I'm sorry. I don't think anyone's sexist or racist. I don't think she called him racist, but other people did. But she called him pretty much sexist for saying if it was a man, that call would have went her way. Yeah, She's made it a sexism issue. 
That's right. Yeah, yeah. In, in the end, at the at the um, she's making out she's a victim. Like, and yeah. oh, don't ever call me a cheat. And he's just he's calling what he's seen. He's seen that they coached like the coach coached from the stands, and it's not allowed. So, yeah. And then she started abusing him. So he took another point or whatever. Okay, have your moment. Have your diva moment. Get over it. And then for her to carry on like she's a victim and then she's making a stand for women's right like for fuck's sake honestly honestly yeah, that, that, oh, I, I know That's a lot of women a lot of women strong women that i know and i see them on social media and they all agree they said she's just carrying like a pork chop did you did you um see the um there's a problem now with the um the character character i can't say this word caricature caricature yeah, yeah. Is that, is that? mark knight he um he's been doing all these characters throughout <laughs> throughout the um the year in the Daily Telegraph yeah, cartoons, yeah. the cartoons. And um the one that he's done about Serena Williams is now being touted as being racist. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's a um, it's a photo of Serena and because when when he does these these cartoons he over it. You exaggerate. You exaggerate. That's what a caricature is. Yeah, that's right. It, it, uh, that's what it is. It, you exaggerate your features. Yeah, exactly. And and now physical features. And now there's yeah. an outrage in America and social media, uh, media, and all over all over the TV and, and stuff like that. They're saying that Mark Knight is a racist, and it's oh. it's become a it's become a a, a color a color thing, and oh, <laughs> unbelievable. Oh, honestly, where's it going to go to? This is why Donald Trump won the election because of this PC shit. People are sick of it. Like most people are really sick of it. There's a lot of social justice warriors on social media, but most smart, intelligent, decent people who know that racism, oh, I don't even want to start because it just fucking leads to trouble. It, Honestly, it's, it's over. It, people are overthinking everything and they're oh, too absolutely. precious. Absolutely. It's ridiculous. And they're too fucking, they're too, they're, everyone's got to walk on eggshells because they're too scared to say anything well, it, about anything. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it shows it shows some of the um, other cartoons that Mark Knight has featured over the years, and that I mean, he overemphasises people's features, politicians, whether it's other sporting personalities or whatever, and nothing has drawn this sort of criticism from what he's what he's done here with Serena Williams. It's just they've made it a, an issue that it's just not the case. It it wasn't meant that way, and now they can just say those sort of things and make it an issue is just beyond me. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, I, all my mates who are black or different coloured skin, t- different shades, tones of skin, yep. none of them think anything about racism or, or they're oppressed or anything like that. It's just this – it's like – it's this media thing that when they say it, it's something. If they don't say it, it's not anything. There's Obviously, there's racist individuals, but they make it like whole countries and whole groups are racist, and, and they're not. <laughs> they're just – it's people aren't politically correct with speech, especially in Australia. It's mm. very bogan and very rough, and and I just it's fucking exhausting. It's exhausting. It is like, I it's can't like this Colin it. Kaepernick shit. This Colin Kaepernick stuff. All right, he wants to kneel for the anthem in America. We, you know, it's good on him. Let him fucking kneel. Mm. Why does it have to be such a big thing about it? And then I, in my opinion, with that. Yeah, okay, that might have started off as a good idea. I oh, standing up for police brutality, but then you look at the stats as well, and police brutality compared to say black on black crime in somewhere like Chicago, is it's Chicago's black on black crime is like fifty fold, yep. you know, and and it's like they've the media have made this big racial thing out of it, mm. and and he's in my opinion is loving the attention and he's carrying on with it, and now he signs a multi million dollar deal with Nike. About oppression, basically about oppression. What about the fucking pe- the sweatshops over over in the countries that are making all the Nike products, where the fucking women and children, which is eighty percent of them, mm. are, are women and children, working their asses off for twenty cents an hour. Cheap labour, yeah. So, so what are you fucking talking about oppression? Like, what, if you if you're really standing up for oppression, how are you signing a multi million dollar contract with a company whose products are made from oppression? Yep. Like, I I just. I did the whole thing to me. It just it's reeks of attention, and he hasn't has a he probably, he might be a great bloke. I don't know him, but fucking the fact that he's fucking done so far against something, but then signs with a company that's all about that. Mm. I just I don't know, <laughs> mate. The world is is gone politically correct, mad. 
there's I read the paper this morning. There's a nine year old girl that's um, causing some controversy controversy by refusing to stand and sing the national anthem. An Australian girl, nine years old, and she's made a stance that she won't stand or sing the national anthem oh, because yeah, I bet that I bet that came from her and not a parent. Well, that's exactly. There's a photo of the parents and stuff there, but she, they're saying that it Australia. Advanced Australia Fair means advanced white Australia. It's got, it's got nothing to do with the indigenous side of, of things. And yeah, you know, crazy. Like people make good points. People make good points, though. Like, I understand. I understand if they want to do it, but the whole media thing about it, and then for Nike, the, the evil evil monsters at Nike, to capitalise on a, on a movement like that while they're doing what they're doing. Like, they've seen the target audience there and just gone, beauty, we'll make fucking millions out of this. Yeah. Now I hear that their stocks went through the roof, and then I hear that they went through the floor. Like I don't know what to believe, but but they've simply seen that there's a target audience at a market for this oppression vibe. Yep. And they've capitalised on it by using this Kaepernick guy, and he's not even like a he's not even a first tier or second tier quarterback at a club. He's had a couple of really bad years. It's all about this, and they're trying to paint him out to be this Malcolm X figure. Yeah. Right. And he's making out, oh, it's just so hard to not get angry when you read about it. I can't. I've got to bloody get away from it. That Between that and the Serena William thing, oh, mate, I'll tell you what. Yeah. It, well, the, tell you what. It's become, yeah, it's become a sexism thing. And it, you've got um, that Miranda Devine, she's a journalist for the Telegraph too. She writes a, a good article on the, the fact that she, uh, Serena Williams. Oh, now you like the Telegraph. No, well, there is some good points in it. She she does make some good points on this on this particular article. But um, apparently, about ten years ago, um, Serena gave it to the uh, touch uh, one of the one of the judges there at, at the tennis, uh, a line judge, and she screamed out at him because he said the ball was out, and he was right. But she said, "I swear to God, I'm going to fucking go." What she say? I swear to God, I'm fucking going to take this fucking ball and shove it down your fucking throat. You hear that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she got away with it. Nothing was said then, and now that that should just be dealt with within the sport. Yes, that's fucking wrong. Absolutely. You get penalised. Okay, move on though. All right, move on. Exactly. But for her to go on like this after she's done that, she's an idiot. She's stupid. Like she hasn't thought about it. Yeah, it's, it's a totally spoiled. It's a it's a spoiled attitude. Totally spoiled. Yeah. She was behind, as you said. She was behind in the game, and she she got the shits, and she was uh, at at fever point in regards to her um, ability to be able to handle those, handle that situation. She lost, she lost a shit, basically yeah. lost a shit. Whether she's white, black, or an alien, she lost a shit. Yep. I don't know. Anyway, there's a bit of a yeah. political. Jeez, you got you went, you went off there. You said the the f word. Sorry, heaps that... of times, mate. Sorry, it's the kids' show, man. Kids listen to this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Anyway, so let's get off that crap. <laughs> anyway, so bottom line, yep. if you want to kneel and for the anthem, that's up to you, mate. But I don't think it deserves all this attention. And if some people do, it's, I guess it's up to the corporation that covers it, whether or not they want to make it a big thing or not. But I don't know. To me, it reeks of him wanting, uh, loving the attention now. Like maybe it didn't start off as that, but it's become that. Yep. And, you know... What, honestly, ask the question: How can he kneel for oppression when he puts shoes on that are made from oppression? How about that? that's a good point? How's how's your ringing in the ear? Do you have ringing in the ear? Tinnitus, 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 tinnitus yeah. I know no, it's tinnitus. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. yeah, I've I've got it, but it's I've gotten used to it. Yeah, so have I. Depending on the background noise, you you don't you don't hear it, or you're not. Aware of it, yeah. When I go to bed, if I if I can hear it now, like now that I'm thinking about, it, I can hear it. But it, oh, I really? kind of I, I remember when I first got it really bad after like practicing music really loud, heavy music, um, with no earplugs. But it was driving me mad. Like I was thinking, I can't go, I can't go through life with that and ringing in my ear. I can't. Yeah. And yeah. at night time when I go to bed, oh, it was just like it sounded like a dentist drill, and I oh, um. Shit. It's gotten heaps that, better now. And like last night when I, I cranked a bit of music in my headphones and after it, it was ringing again, but it goes away. But they reckon it's got something to do with the damaged little hairs on your ear. Yeah. The little hairs, the <laughs> tiny little micro hairs that are all in your ear that they yeah. become damaged. And apparently you can reverse it. 
Yeah, there's there's plenty of stuff on YouTube as like as like any topic, but yeah, the, you, there's different things that you can do to um, alleviate it and and stuff. But it does it does ring really loud when you start concentrating on it. It it, it can be deafening. Hey, do you use uh, when you play music like practice and, and live? Do you use earplugs? No, I don't. Not even when you practice. No. Oh, Joe, no. Dad, you got to you got to use it when you practice. Yeah, and no, I should, and I'm I'm going to do something about it actually because um, our bass player Bass, he's got these ones that have been specially made for his ears. They cost about 120 bucks or Just whatever. Just get them, get them. Yeah, cuts out all the uh, the high high frequencies. That yeah, make the it a priority, Dad, because honestly, you you will end up deaf. There's no way you can play music that often that loud and not have really bad long term effects from it. Um, you know what I do? I've got these Bose. They're really good. They're like 500 bucks or something. I got them ages ago. Um, Bose noise cancellation headphones. Yeah, I put them on, and you put the noise cancellation on, and it just—you can hear everything. You hear all the music. It just takes the big bottom end that rattles your earlobes, your yeah. eardrums out, and it takes the high end out that pierces your eardrums. And it's just a really good way to do it. I, I, mate, that became one of the first thing I'd pack when I'd before practice. I'd put them, make sure they were in the car because. So they're just like your normal headphone. Just my noise he- cancelling headphones that I I use you, to listen to you music. P- play with them on, okay? Yeah, and I, I I nearly did it live once. I think I might have done it live. It looks a bit silly, obviously, because they're big puffy kind of things. But just yeah. for practice, it's like unreal. At least you know if you're practicing a couple of times a week, or you know once every week or whatever. Yep. And then you're gigging. Like at least you're cutting half of it out. You know? Yeah. 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 But, yeah, that's, um, a, that's a good idea. Practice wise, I I need to look into these these are ones that are made especially for that. Yeah, you can get them specially made. They mould them to your ear and they allow yeah. in whatever you like. Like you can test them and you can say, oh, I want more bass or less bass, blah blah blah. And yeah. you wear, wear them live and you hear everything evenly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to do it. Oh well, oh well. All right, Egg. Well, no um, worries, bro. In uh, enjoy your um, rest of the day, mate, and I'll I'll speak to you soon. Take it easy, sir. See you, mate. Thank you.